Hey guys, so um, uh, our last video was about sleeping masks. So this video is going to be about sleeping bags. So and now I'm just going to hand it off to Daddy. He has a better experience than I could ever. Thanks, Abby. Um, so getting into the ins and outs of sleeping bags, I'm number here behind me. Uh, there are different types, different shapes, and different types of fill in them. I'll go through that as we go along in the video. Um, a sleeping bag, effectively, all a sleeping bag does is it stops the warm air around you from escaping uh, out through the sleeping bag and it prevents the cold air in the tent getting in at you. Uh, the way this is measured, there's two different rating systems for the way it's measured. A seasonal rating system or a temp more modern temperature rating system. Any good sleeping bag uh, manufacturer will have one would have either of these or even both of these either on the stuff sack and on the sleeping bag itself. So if you take for example uh, my wife's sleeping bag here, it says on it that it is a, a three season sleeping bag. So what this means is that it's suitable for three of the seasons. So if you think of that, a one season sleeping bag is a summer sleeping bag, two season sleeping bag is spring and summer, three season sleeping bag is um, spring, summer, autumn, and four season is all year round, including the middle of winter. The next type we have, next rating system then, that you might see, is what's on uh, one of my sleeping bags here, there is the temperature rating system. And that will show, uh, the, show different degrees of when it is, um, of, of how far it can go down, how, how likely you are to be able to survive at the different temperatures. So it says on this one, it's comfort level at 6, it's got an extreme setting at minus 14, and it's got a limit of 1. So if we take it that uh, you can ignore the minus 14, because that's the extreme limit, and that really is that you will survive if you're doing everything right and you have all the right equipment and you have the right sleeping pad that you will survive at minus 14. The limit is that no one in our situation wants to be going carrying on at that kind of those kind of temperatures. So I always pick when I'm trying to pick a sleeping bag, I'm always looking at either the comfort uh, level or the limit level, never the extreme level. Um, so the way a sleeping bag I've, I've shown you that a sleeping bag uh, it keeps it stops the air coming through, but it does this by what's called the the, uh, the puffiness of the sleeping bag, or the, or the insulation or the fill of the sleeping bag. And there's two types of fill or insulation. There is a synthetic insulation, uh, which the, these three are: the man-made synthetic insulation, or we have uh, a natural situation insulation or fill. Uh, a down type insulation, so either duck down or goose down is usually which this one is. Now, the advantages of down are that it, it is by far the most efficient at um, uh, efficient at uh, thermally efficient type of insulation. It is really light. It compresses really down, really into a small package. So it's great for backpackers and so on and so forth that are taking it with them. The disadvantage is that because of those advantages, it's very expensive or can be very expensive. And if it gets wet, it is beyond useless. It has no, it holds no thermal efficiency at all or practically none at all. Where synthetic sleeping bags, which are by far the most common that, that we're going to see in the shops and online, um, for, for normal backpackers and holiday makers is way more affordable. It does hold some of its, even when wet, it holds some of its efficiency. And if it does get wet, it'll actually dry up much quicker than a down sleeping bag. Um, the, the, in higher end products now, the, the, the really top end manufacturers, the lines are blurring between these two. Um, it, the, the main disadvantage of synthetic is that it's much bulkier to compress, so they're much going to be much bigger stuff sacks than um, 
then a, a down slip and bite. But this is all blurry. You can get now at the top end of the market, you can get down slip and bikes that are kind of waterproof, that have waterproofness built into them, and the synthetic ones are getting lighter. But for most of what we're going to see, what well, I'm after saying still stands. Um, so if you just have a look at the, the, the sleeping bikes here, we have there's there's really three main shapes of sleeping bikes that we're going to come across. There's the mummy shape, if you can see, it's kind of tapered in. You have the rectangular shape, or this is more the most traditional shape that when I was a kid that we'd have slept in, and a rectangular or envelope shape was called. And then we have something in between that's called the barrel shape. So it's kind of the best properties of both. The mummy sleeping bag is great for people backpacking and that uh, because it cuts out less, there's less fabric in it so it'll get smaller and it um, and it, it's also, there's less, because it's so slim, there's less air in it for it to heat up so it's more efficient that way than a rectangular sleeping bag. With the rectangular sleeping bag has even a lot more leg room in it and a lot more comfort in it I feel. This is my wife's one and this can even fold out completely into a big duvet if you want to be a better word. And so I'd say the barrel, the barrel shape is kind of the best of both. You can also get, and this one is, this is a child sleeping bag. It's great for kids because it's not that big so it's easier for them to manage and um, they're, they're usually cheaper as well and you can get um, female sleeping bags that are designed for more designed for uh, uh, women's shapes um, where this kind of is at the uh, 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 an adult version of a classic uh, mummy sleeping bag the kind of price range we're kind of looking at uh, this was in the region we got this about five four or five years ago this was in the region of about 20 euros and both of these were 50 euros and I think um, this is about six or seven euros, but it was a, a, a Chinese import. But you're certainly looking at um, the, both of these are three season. My son's one is a three season sleeping bag, and this one is well, technically it's a four season sleeping bag, but I have my doubts, even though it is a great sleeping bag and I love it. Um, but you could spend any kind of money on your sleeping bag. I've looked at online, and you could spend anything from. It really depends on the on the uh, seasonal rating and the, the the quality of it, whether it's down or synthetic. But you could even spend you could spend certainly from 20, 30 euros up to three hundred euros, no problem on uh, a sleeping bag. Lastly, I just want to quickly talk about uh, duvets. I see some people bringing duvets. I hear about people bringing duvets when they're camping. Um, we don't do it mainly because one. Uh, a duvet is so bulky, it's just more space it takes up in, in the car to get going and you certainly won't carry it backpacking. Um, two, you're more prone to get cold spots in it uh, when you're air camping with it because it'll, it can easily roll off and you'll be cold in different parts of your body through the night. And lastly, I've got to question how um, they're not designed for camping. And if you take it that a duvet when you're at home is in your bedroom where temperature is going to be somewhere in the region of 15 to 20 degrees and it's unlikely well maybe not this summer but most of the time you, you we won't be when you're camping we won't be having anything like that it'd be more likely to get down to to freezing and i question then how efficient and how good they will be when we're when we're camping um in the next video I'm going to talk about the different parts of a sleeping bag and what you should be looking out for when you're buying it. I hope, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please give us a thumbs up. Thumbs up. Turn on notifications and subscribe. Thank you. Thank you.